Welcome back, eh? This is the Canadian Silver Seeker, and I hope you guys are having another great day like I am. Just got back from my weekly LCS trip, and this week I picked myself up another $5 of 80% silver quarters in Canada. My LCS is awesome, and uh, they sold a bunch of their junk silver earlier this week. However, he went through some of his rarer dates, he said, and he pulled me out $5. He actually, in the stack, pulled me out $5.25 um, for silverware, he said, which is awesome. He does that quite often for me. When, I, uh, when I've purchased in the past, I'd get $10 or whatever, and I'd get a, a good couple, three extra quarters sometimes, which is awesome. Uh, most bullion places aren't going to do that for you, and I get it for a cheaper price than I can find basically anywhere else online or locally um, to where I live. Um, so what can I t tell you about silver and 80% silver in Canada? Well, as you guys know, I'm trying to fill up this $1,000.25 Royal Canadian Mint bag here. And that is going to take me quite some time due to the size and the weight of that bag. There's going to be many, many pounds of silver when I do have it finished uh, and full finally. Um, there'll be over 600 ounces actually of silver. And why is because one silver dollar doesn't matter whether it's 10, uh, 10 dimes, 4 quarters, 250 cent pieces or a silver Canadian dollar between 1920 um, and 1966. Yes, I like to say 1966. There is 0.6 of an ounce. If it's four quarters, actually that's not four quarters. I only picked up three there. If it's four quarters, then it is 0.6 of an ounce. So $5 will be three ounces. Ten dollars, six ounces. A hundred dollars, sixty ounces. A thousand dollars, six hundred ounces. So, like I say, he's super awesome. He gives me deals. He gives me the best price that I can get anywhere. And he often gives me some extra silver weight, which, you know, a guy just cannot say no to. Um, what else can I tell you about the Canadian... 80% silver in quarters. Like I said, 19, 1920 all the way to 1966 is considered 80% silver. The Bobcat quarters in 1967, if they come right from a proof set, they're considered 80%. But if it was in circulation, it is very well likely 50%. And there is no way to tell for sure unless you literally pull a quarter out of a proof set. And as soon as you do, and you've lost that knowledge, you don't know if that quarter is 50% or 80%. So I take all of my 1967 and 68 quarters, and they go in a 50% silver stack rather than in a 80% uh, silver stack. In 1920, um, another awesome thing about my uh, LCS is he once in a while gives me these beautiful King George the Fifth quarters. And as you can see, these ones, I got two 1935s today and a 1936. And as you can see, those are in great, great condition. Like there's a little bit of wear on there but not bad at all to be put in literally 80% silver. That is amazing. Typically when you get a King George V in your 80% silver, this is more what you're going to be looking at. A worn, worn quarter like that where you can't even read the date on it and literally the whole front face of it is worn right off. King George V appeared on the Canadian Quarter between 1911 and 1936. 
um, between 1911 and 1919, all of the quarters would actually be sterling silver, um, 925 silver, rather than the 80% silver. But as soon as you hit the year 1920 all the way to 1936, you are looking at 80% silver, which actually kind of surprised me. I thought all of these, these kind of quarters were 92.5%, but they are not. Um, they are 80% up to 1920. And then in 1920, um, all the way, or sorry, and then in 1936, or 37, I guess I should say, all the way to 1952, the face on the quarter changed to King George V. And as you can see, a different design. Still 80% silver, still 0.15 of an ounce of actual silver weight. Um, if you had a sterling silver one, 1919, I guess, um, or previous, the actual silver weight on those is supposed to be 0.17. Now, you take that into account, if you're looking at some worn coins like that, you might not have 0.17. And Kitty had to walk by and say hi there. So that is part of the reason why my LCS will throw some extra ones in there, just due to that wear and tear of those coins where you literally can't even see the faces on them anymore. So past 1952, into 1953, all the way to 1964, the face on the quarter changed to the Queen Elizabeth II, the Laureate portrait, as you can see there. And then in 1965, and up to 1967, the Queen's face changed to the second portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. And as you can see there, that actually is a 50% one. It might be 80%, super shiny, super nice, but that goes in my 50% pile same with these ones these ones were actually 50 percent ones that i had here just so that i could show the differences of the queen's face on there As you can see 1968 on the rest of them here making them 50 percent silver anyways thanks for listening to me ramble i'll be going to get another five dollars next week from my lcs i love to oh i guess one th other things that i should say is i love to put these ones even though these ones are 80 percent i like to put them into their own stack and so i don't have a ton of them right now but they'll be going into their own rolls and those ones are super nice ones so I could maybe even get a little more than actual just silver weight. There might actually be some numistic value in those uh, last three that I picked up today. But like I said, be heading back to the LCS next week to pick up another $5 of 80% quarters if he has. He said he would give me sterling silver quarters at the same price. So we'll see what we get depending on what he has in stock every week. Thanks for listening to me ramble. Remember, it doesn't cost you a single piece of silver or gold to like and subscribe. You guys mean the world to me. Happy stacking, eh?